Well, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today what we're going to do is I'm going to be showing you guys a review of the EMP Nimble. So this design in itself is pretty awesome. Uh, this really is just a really, really good knife. And I know that's kind of skipping ahead in the review itself. But the reason I'm starting this off is I kind of want to grab your guys' attention and let you guys know how this dude operates. Uh, these are the types of companies that I want to support. And, you know, nowadays knives are so good that there's no one best knife. There's no model that's going to be light years beyond, you know, what's already out there. So you got to do something extra. And we've seen it in other industries, but really the industries, in my opinion, that deserve this credit, that deserve to be risen to the top and, you know, all that is the guys that take into consideration what the what the consumers want and treat the consumers with respect, not just like we're numbers, like you're trying to get our money. Yeah, you're in business. That's what's supposed to happen. But you're giving us the time of day, right? You respond to everything. I made a video, and no, I'm not the largest YouTuber in the world, but the he found the video on his knife and commented and started a conversation through Instagram about the origins of him and his uh, his company and his designs. So with that being said, I'm going to switch this back around. I'm going to read to you, but also show you on screen what his responses were to a couple of my questions. And I think that really paints a different light on a company. I, I, I can't stress enough that uh, I will go out of my way to check out his designs from here on out just because of the customer service and style that he brings to the table. All right, let's switch it around. All right, so here's his response to me just asking about his backstory and thanking him for reaching out. So he says, hey, Tyler, thanks for reaching out. My backstory is pretty simple. I needed a job, so I did a crazy thing and turned my hobby into one. Obviously not that simple, but it is what I did. I reached out and asked a lot of makers I look up to for advice and some were helpful. We started with the OTF knives, which I was modding into a great knife. Ran a collab with the company where I made a few blade designs. Then I drew up the nimble and just knew the second I finished scratching it out, I had to make it. I ran prototypes with a couple companies because I only care about who builds the be design the best. QSP sent me the best prototypes, actually beating out a few of the higher end brands, funny enough. Pleasant surprise for me, same way Best Tech killed it on the Thick Boy. Everything I do is very collaborative in that I engage the production teams in the process and will act on the input they give. In the end, I'm just a knife nut that's still on my way down the rabbit hole. Up here, I kind of thanked him for his time and whatnot. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to be respectful of the time because I know somebody like him has probably got a million people messaging him. So then he responds with, I don't mind at all, my man. Share what you like. I also asked him if I could share this stuff. Work just isn't work, if that makes sense. Yes, I'm on a one-man show when it comes to the business and design, though I always ask my partners to do exactly how I specify first, knowing I never nail it on the first try. That is where the collaborative approach comes in to nail down the details you just can't know until you build it once. We talk about solutions and make it work. Mostly I ask my production managers what they think, but we utilize the engineers as well. Mostly for small details that seem small, but make the knife in the end. The OTF knives are up on our site, the Slender Man, I did the Warncliffe and Tonto designs. Basically, if you ever see the Adam logo on a knife, I designed some or all of it depending on the project. Honestly, for the most part, the teams have been fantastic. This is me asking them how it's been working with the production teams. The hardest part is 99% of the communication is email and image only due to the language barriers. Only ever two disagreements on how to execute a design aspect. In the end, my engineer was correct on his point once, and the other I was. Damn glad I stuck to my guns, because it resulted in exactly like I knew it would. I think most of the overseas teams are not accustomed to being given any freedom or input on a project. People get more invested when they are part of it. QSP is especially awesome to work with. They ask a lot at, to start, but once you're in, they couldn't be more on it. And then he, and I kind of chopped it off here, but he says, I like these kind of di dialogues and it never bothers you know, to reach out in a case like this. Okay, so just my overall thoughts on that dialogue alone and 
him as a man, you know, company and, and not really judging him as a man, but the point is, is somebody who gives responses like that, um, so open and honest to talk about the process that he was involved in. And then even his methodologies, as far as not sticking, sticking with say Riot, because Riot's the most known, awesome maker, which if you would have just went with Riot, it might've been easier to sell because you can advertise the Riot designs. Nobody thinks of QSP as a higher end designer. Same thing with Best Tech. They've done it. We're now getting to see it. But instead of going for the cash grab right away, he wanted to make sure his product was what he wanted. And something like that, I think, tells you a lot about the future of EMP designs. I think it's just awesome. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind that I actually took the screenshot and read it. I just, I, I think that he, that needed to get out there. Because knowing the person and putting a personalization on an item itself really changes kind of how you look at it. It's kind of like a spider kill, right? Spider coats you get in hand, and they're beautiful all of a sudden, even though they're ugly as shit. That's just the just the, the nature of them. But once they're in hand, most of them you're like, I get it. This is awesome. So that's kind of another aspect to it is the customer service, the idea behind the design, why he chooses to go where he does. And he's not married to any production team, but he's probably going to go back to the ones that did it well in the past eventually and ones that he likes to work with. Now, if Best Tech, say, is a pain in the ass to work with, then maybe he won't go back there. Maybe he'll kind of go back to QSP. Or maybe he'll still stick with the same methodology that he has. Either way, his process has to be respected, in my opinion. And it's it's earned this knife higher up on the list as far as knives that I love, not only because it's a badass knife, but it's a badass company and a badass man behind the company. So... Enough gushing, let's get through the view. All right, guys, time to check out this badass little knife. So, as I said before, this is the EMP Nimble. It, it's made by EMP Designs, and it just has so many little details. And you can tell this knife was made by an enthusiast um, because it adds some enthusiast elements that... You know, somebody who's not listening to the community wouldn't have put into here. But it doesn't just focus on the enthusiast elements. You know, I, I kind of separate enthusiast in my mind between user, uh, collector, and enthusiast. There's almost like three different genres of knife guy. And all of us are a piece of those. Just some, the percentage lies a little bit higher in, say, like for me, I'm probably more of an enthusiast than a user than I am a collector. So I would probably label myself as 50% enthusiast, 40% user, 10% collector, because my collection's always changing. I kind of do it for the channel. He kind of hit all of those elements into here. So let's give you a quick overview of the knife. So these are titanium scales. The show side, which I will try to show you guys, sometimes the angle doesn't work on camera, is milled out on the inside. We have a lanyard hole right here, some titanium hardware, a really cool pivot cover right there it is captive and on this side we have a big old honking pocket clip that is cool what's cool about emp designs is i think on the thick boy this looks the same don't quote me on that but while this pocket clip wouldn't necessarily look good on a lot of models it's like it fits in with what he's trying to do it's a little something extra and I, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a pocket clip we would hate on most things, but it fits perfectly, and I don't think they could have made anything else work as good as this pocket clip as far as aesthetics go. As far as function, this thing works just fine. It is just like a normal pocket clip. It carries not too deep. It's right around here once it's in your pocket, but it does kind of shift like this due to the lines right here. So it will kind of sit a little cattywampus in your pocket, if you will. But this is a smaller knife, so it doesn't take up too much space. It is a little bit heavier, so the carry there, it's a little bit of a balance, but. So all these edges are really milled, like you have a lot of milling going on here. And then you have some scalloping to access the lock bar right here. And the lock bar access, as you can see, is pretty easy to get to. You can see it from the other side there. The Ah, I just noticed this too. The lock side does have a little pocket milled out down here. Let's see if I can get you guys any type of visual on this. 
there's the pocket that's milled out down there, and then there's the milling on the inside of the knife there. As you can see on the inside, there's the backspacer with the serial number of 89 on the backspacer. Uh, all right, I think there was like 250 of each made or something of that nature. I could be completely wrong on that number. Now, there's several different opening methods before we get to the blade itself. I uh, didn't talk about this little pocket there. I haven't really found too much of a use for that. Uh, I know it's probably for when you're flipping, it's almost like a landing zone, but I, it doesn't really affect me either way. But you can flick it just like a normal light switch. You can front flip it very easily. You can reverse flick it very easily. And you can thumb flick it easily, but I'm resting on the lock bar. Ugh, yeah. So thumb flicking is something that I only do with thumb studs, to be perfectly honest. I don't really. So it's probably my skill more than it is the knife. Uh, and slow rolling. The way I always slow roll something is I'll pop it open with two fingers. I have this behind. And then I'll just roll it open with my thumb. Now to talk about this blade shape. This is kind of why I'm excited for the Thick Boy. In that a smaller knife with, you know, any type of belly... I feel like when you draw through material, it's not going to grab it. and You're going to kind of run through it a little bit quickly, which I do kind of find with this knife. If I'm doing long, long cuts, I, I have a tendency. You can push, but if, you're, if your arm is doing a natural motion, you're naturally going to push and slice through material, and you're going to kind of run out of blade here, especially due to this large sharpening choil. Is that a bad thing? No, because each knife has its own purpose, right? So you have a knife like this that's meant for, you know, everyday carry gen general tasks. You have a knife like this, right? <laughs> Where the artisan cutlery proponent is, yeah, this thing's got cardboard processing, a monster, but this isn't necessarily an everyday knife. So it's kind of like, f like what function is that knife supposed to do? Well, all knives cut. But I was listening to, I think it was the Knife Junkie, and he was talking to or mentioning a... Uh, an interview with somebody or a conversation and they were like or was it him or maybe it was Mike Emler I don't remember but it was one of them and they were like that knife is not built for cutting that knife is built for prying right there's there's different designs for knives that really serve a totally different purpose hence razor blades for your face hence surgical knives for doctors you know there's always going to be something different just because it's a folding knife doesn't mean it has its own genre so do i think this is going to be a badass cardboard processing knife it's possible it's possible that it can do it is it going to be uncomfortable no is it going to be the best no it's an EDC knife. So when you're trying to be the jack of all trades, you're not going to be the master of anything. And that's just kind of the common theme here. I don't think this knife does anything, any one thing better than any other knife. Maybe the fidget effect. The fidget effect is through the roof. And then the attention to detail here. But what I do think is that this knife does everything much better than most EDC knives. Let's talk about this blade. So this is a drop point ish it kind of has this wannabe spear point if this was a little bit more symmetrical to the other side it has this very aggressive hollow grind with this beautiful satin finish from the belts that looks just fantastic i don't know if the camera's picking it up and i forgot to turn up my damn brightness so it's hard for me to see which i i really actually love this blade I love the ergonomics with that choke up point. This knife is meant to be choked up on. This is perfectly comfortable and I have four fingers on it, but the choked up position, this feels good. This feels really, really good. Now, one thing that's really cool about this design, and I don't, I, I don't remember if I seen it on the Thick Boy coming out or not, but that opening hole, this is so badass. How he has like a fuller and then punched a hole through the fuller. So you can, without even getting in that hole, open it up. You know, it, it's it's a very functionally driven for fidget factor and knife maneuvering and manipulating uh, idea that was put in there that was executed so well and it looks amazing. That looks really, really cool. The last thing I want to talk about before I get to anything else is this long strip of jimping right here. Now, I think, and I didn't ask him this question, I should have, the long strip of jimping to me, kind of comes off as, <sighs> we normally put the jimping on a knife. Let me find a knife with it. 
this is a bad example, but, oh, there's a good example, maybe. I wasn't ready for this line. So, on this one, it almost works because it holds your fingers so far back, but most knives jimping on the spine are down too low, and you're seeing videos come out where they're talking about it. Like, I don't really put my hands here. Usually, I'm choked up a little bit more and my thumbs up here, right? Uh, so, with that long strip of jimping, to me, shows it's kind of like you have it in back for the, the front flip, but then oops, you have it up front for where your thumb is naturally going to land on the blade. There's one school of thought. The other thought that I kind of ran into was maybe this is an homage to kind of like the way knives were done and the way they should be done going forward. I doubt that that's the thought process, but that's what it reminds me of is like, hey, you know, this is where we were. This is, this is how far we've come. I really think it's more just the front flipper and the thumb placement afterwards, but either way, it's done really well and it's comfortable. As far as hot spots in hand, there really are none. Right here, I don't feel that pocket clip. I still don't feel that pocket clip. The only thing that I would say is a little bit of a hot spot that I think we could have done better on this is having the, this part of the finger choil match up with the lines of the knife. Widen this finger choil out. There's nothing wrong with the super wide finger choil. Make it match up with the frame because as I'm bearing down on this, you kind of, it, it wants, I think the idea, and you can see what he did here is he kind of cut those into it right there for your finger to rest and be more comfortable. And now that is comfortable, but I think we would have gotten a slightly more comfortable position if you would have made that flush. Not a nitpick by any means. It's I, I don't know the answer to that. To me, that would make a little bit more sense because this is the only part when you're bearing down and you're squeezing really, even right here, it's not bad. But if you're choked back and kind of pulling back, that's where you feel it. The other thing that I want to point out that I don't know if you call this a hot spot or not, I only notice it when I'm fidgeting with this knife like a like for a long time, is when I'm sitting here doing this, right? These two corners right here, are super sharp so they're not super sharp when you're manipulating it normal but if you're going to use this as your fidget spinner and edc knife which a lot of us do so don't judge you know ye who cast the first stone right we all do it let's just cut the bullshit we all use our knives just as much if not more as entertainment more than a tool um with the select you know with with the few people that that don't right there's a few people out there that uh david he's the one that lent in the adamases i could see him not necessarily using it more as a fidgety toy than it is a tool because he lives in a farm and he does a bunch of stuff with it uh for the other people that don't do that i i think you're probably in a lot of the same boat as me even if it's a 50 50 you know fidget tool but just anyways so as i'm fidgeting with it this kind of has a tendency to rub like this on my palm and I will say after a while that does wear <laughs> again nitpick right I love the standoff like that like the accent colors that he did with the hardware I think it looks really cool with this design although I was kind of irritated that I bought this design and then that second drop came and there are so many good looking designs that came in that second drop it was amazing as far as action wise this thing feels just like a QSP and that makes sense, right? Because it was designed by QSP. Because, you know, QSP, I think, is one of the most underrated knives for action. But every single knife that I've owned that I've fallen in love with that has been a QSP has had phenomenal action. I said it before, the QSP Copperhead, the QSP Harpy, the QSP Pelican, the QSP Puffin, oh my god. Now you got the QSP Penguin and Titanium. Even the QSP Gannett's pretty good. And then you have this knife. Or the QSP Legatus. I mean, that knife's through the roof. It's amazing. Then you have the EMP Nimble, and it feels the exact same. You feel nothing on the way down. Even though it's not wanting to go right now, I've had it drop shut in the past. It's just, I probably should have cleaned it up before this review. You don't feel anything. Even when it's getting caught on that lock bar, which is why it's not dropping freely, right? If I open up the lock bar, it drops. It's just, you gotta, that, that to me is a wear. You just gotta sit there and use it, and eventually it'll wear in, and that thing will become more and more and more drop shut. It's it's amazing. QSP did a phenomenal job with the OEM work. I see no flaws 
with this knife in regards to production and manufacturing. I see very little to no flaws as far as design. You know, I talked about potentially changing that. And then this is a little sharp. I don't know how you would knock that down, but it does come to that point. All right. I don't normally do my reviews in this way, but this one was a little bit different. And I was kind of a little intimidated to review this, mainly because, you know, it was the first designer that I have been in contact with that I've had a really positive, you know, interaction. I, I always talk about the other ones that I did not have a positive interaction with, and that's not what this video is about. But I didn't give a damn about reviewing their knives and being like, you know, if I miss a detail, <laughs> it's not that I want to miss a detail, but you... you you're kind of like salty about it, you know what I mean? It didn't bias anything, it just, you, I didn't take, I think I took more time in the review of this knife than I did any other knife in my collection. Let's get you guys some specs, some size comparisons, and then we'll just kind of wrap up. I know this video is going to run out kind of long, and I intended for it to do so. I really don't care about the timeline on this one. So the overall weight's coming in at a 3.75 ounces. I don't know what the frag pattern weight is, but I have to assume it's very, very comparable. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't imagine that this would be much different. Maybe a little bit lighter on the frag pattern, but not by much. So the overall length is just shy of 7 inches. The blade length is coming in at about 3 inches, but the cutting edge is just shy of 2.5 inches due to that large finger choil. And we talk about it all the time, but we're going to say it in each one. Obviously, OEM'd by QSP, designed in the U.S. And the plunge grind with the finger choil is done very, very well. To the point of you get a lot of sharpening life out of this. Now, this blade stock, while it looks super thick to me, this looks like a super thick blade stock. It's only coming in at 125 thousandths. There's my micrometer zeroed. So, or caliper, rather. So, well, which one is it? I think it's a micrometer. Anyways, so what we're looking at here is basically that is a one eighth inch thick blade stock. The behind the edge is coming in. Oh, I think I'm losing battery. That's all right, I got some more. The behind the edge is coming in at about 15 to 20 thousandths. And then the overall thickness of the knife, excluding the pocket clip, is coming in at 480 thousandths. So it's a little bit thinner than your average, but your average I'm considering to be the uh, Rat Model 1, you know, at the exactly half of an inch mark thick. So this, this isn't thin by any means, but it's not thick either. Coming in at an overall height of 1.3 inches. So I would say that's also middle of the road as far as average when it comes to spec wise. I've already done a few comparisons with this knife, uh, mainly because the Wii Knives Thug, I think, similar to this. I, I think they, they kind of speak the same language as far as size, what you're going to use them for, that type of thing. I've also compared it with the Vero Axon. The reason I compared it with the Vero Axon was because EMP designs in Vero they're kind of totally different, but to me, there's a lot of similarities in the thought process, the hype, and everything else. So here's your Rat Model 1 and Rat Model 2. Okay, so your Rat Model 2 slightly longer, but not by much. Obviously, your Rat Model 1 is much longer. And yes, your Rat Model 2 had the thumb studs removed. I got a project going on. All right, here is your Feldspar and your small Feldspar. As you can see, it's almost the same size as a small feldspar in length. It's going to carry a little bit more heavy and a little bit more wide in the pocket, though. That's just carry. We're not talking about, like, the other benefits, but that's whatever. All right, so here is your Civivi Perf. I'm probably going to use the Perf more than I use the Elementum, although the Elementum probably should be done. I just love the Perf. I think the Perf is an awesome knife. So as you can see, the Perf is slightly longer. Your Praxis is coming in at much, much longer. And then I'm going to grab a couple more higher ends because I believe this knife was coming in at around $280. So you, let us show you guys a Hinderer XM18 Skinny Sheep's Foot with a flipper delete. Let us show you one of its QSP brethren in the Penguin. Just about the same length, a little bit shorter than the Penguin. 
Here it is up against some stiff competition. This is the Wii Ray Laconico Esprit. The Esprit is a little bit larger. As you guys know, my feelings on the Esprit, I think the Esprit is probably one of the best knives to come for EDC purposes. Sorry, reaching over into my box. Last but not least, let's show you guys a Sabenza. This is a large Sabenza, 31. Obviously much larger. All right. So as I said, the price in this guy was approximately $280. That was the pre-order price. So if they ever go to a production run where they're in retailers and stuff, you're going to pay a little bit more. The pre-order price, basically, as I understand it, is, is you're giving the money up front, and that helps them front the OEM the money so that they're not coming out of their pocket by like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to make these runs, right? So that's why you get a little bit better deal on the pre-order price. Because you're helping, it's almost like an investment, if you will. So 280 bucks, do I think this thing's worth it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think that the design has so many elements in it. It does remind me a lot of a Vero. That's why, let's see, if I, I only got one Vero on hand right now. Bad example. But the language seems the same to me. And... You could tell it's like a modern era of knife. They're both kind of like these like aircraft, like science fiction-ish while blending the everyday use and traditional sense too. And both of these are, th these two companies are the future of the knife community. I mean, they're taking it to the next level. They're taking it to a idea of, you know, modernization of the mod of the knife. I mean... If, I don't really have a good example of a traditional knife, which I should, but if, if our fathers and grandfathers seen these knives come out, you know, 30 years ago, they would have shit themselves and not used it because it's like <laughs> the world wasn't ready for stuff like this, right? But now that we have them, I, I'm just so damn happy to have these things. Uh, it's This is where the collector, which is about 10%, comes out in me. I've flirted with the idea because I have a constant evolution of knives in my collection. And I think until I get my next EMP designs, I don't know that I will be letting this one go. I think it's a very, very good staple, not only for the knife itself, but I think it's just kind of cool to see where we've come. And I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but truly the EMP Nimble is definitely a great everyday use knife it does nothing better than any other knives but it does a lot of things together better than a lot of the other knives not to mention the fidget factor is fantastic the oem work is fantastic the design looks so damn cool is this worth 280 for the pre-order price a hundred percent that's where i was going with that little rant is that barrows are costing for a vero axon which has very similar lines despite you know despite being a totally different knife. God, you got the worn clip for the sheep's foot style blade, blah, 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 blah. The design language feels the same, and you're paying 320, 350, you know, for, for a Vero Axon, not a liner lock, I'm talking the frame locks. And that's before you get into anything else, right? Anything Riot, you're paying over $300. I think there's so much design language and work that went into this, it is definitely worth the price of 280 as the pre-order. I don't know what the retail price is gonna be. Hopefully this wasn't too long, too drawn out, and entertaining enough to kind of showcase this as one of probably my favorite knives in 2021. I think it's just awesome. They got some badass looking ones that are coming out. I believe he mentioned that they're coming out with some XLs that he's teased on his Instagram as well. So that's a three and a half inch nimble. That one, ah man. That's going to be awesome. That's all I got for you guys today. My name is Tyler. This is the EMP Designs Nimble. Go check out their website. I don't get anything out of this. There's no like, no, no partnership between the two. So me gushing over it is honest, genuine, unbiased stuff. I mean, this is a really, really, really cool knife. And I got the thick boy on the way, and I cannot wait. I am so stoked to get that one. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys. In the end, I'm just a knife nut that's still on my way down the rabbit hole.